Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Honorable Nakachinda, you have been in and out of court uh, from last year. Obviously, uh, the court process are going to continue even into this year for party ownership. And obviously, the big question is, do you have confidence in the justice system of this country to give you the desired ruling that you want as a patriotic front led by President Edgar Lungo? I think we can only, in this case, um, uh, express our desire that uh, the principle of the separation of powers um, between or among the three arms of government is adhered to. We know that Mr. Kandetri and the UPND uh, his appetite to mingle and interfere with the judiciary is very high and we have evidence to that effect. The desire to mingle and interfere with the legislature uh, or parliament is very high, and we have evidence to that effect. Do you mind sharing we, the evidence? Well, in this case, this is not a platform for it. But uh, we are still, you know, expressing confidence uh, in the Chief Justice, who is the head of the uh, judiciary and the judges there, that uh, no matter how m much effort is applied to try and polarize the judiciary, they must still be within the judiciary remnants that will stick to professionalism, ethics, and the rule of law, and just apply the law as it is, uh, regardless of uh, the issues and matters that are presented before them. Uh, the executive through the president has been making a lot of pronouncement, pronouncements that are never expected to be made uh, in relation to how the judiciary should conduct itself. Um, uh, and to some extent we've seen that uh, the conduct of uh, judicial officers has been one that seems to be you know, aligned with the pronouncement of the executive which is very worrying. Uh, just across the borders in DRC, when we look at uh, the uh, DRC and the, his history and the current situation there, I think we can say Zambia is more stable, expected to have more organized systems and institutions of government compared to that jurisdiction. With all that confusion, the executive, through President Chisakedi, tried to move and intimidate the judiciary there. Uh, and there were two, two or three lawsuits that were presented to the judiciary. The judiciary rose to the occasion and made decisions that were seemingly controversial and not in favor of the executive, but stabilized the, process, the society you know, um, and led to what we are seeing now. We are yet to interrogate the pronounced result of uh, the election. But now I can say that the judiciary played a role to make sure that uh, the DRC remains stable. Mm. The judiciary has a duty here to make sure that the rule of law prevails. The issues around patriotic front, save for political interference, they are straightforward. You. I, saw, I heard in your introduction trying to suggest that the uh, Mausamp and the, uh, some cronies around him held a conference. I think your conscience and uh, just you as an individual know there was, there was no such a conference that was held. 
there was uh, something really that was a total joke. Somebody who is not even a member of Patriotic Front issuing a notice that there will be a retreat on the 24th of uh, October, the day of Indi celebrating our independence. And then uh, all of a sudden, police and institutions of government swung in action. One, to, the police were, before even that so-called retreat that he converted itself into a conference uh, was held, individuals' fingerprints were being processed for purposes of wanting to change office bearers. It can only be that this is a sponsored you know, activity. And the, we live in the same environment. We didn't expect that the judiciary would even make some of the decisions that have been made so far. We went to court to stop that illegality and uh, uh, an activity that has the potential to create anarchy in this country. At first value, you know, a decision which was a correct decision was made to grant an injunction so that issues are surrounding PF issues can be studied properly because there was no uh, irreversible damage that will be occasioned by Tumau Samba. You understand? He went to have an activity which was inimical at least to the members and the leadership of the party at the time. What was surprising is that it was an application expert eh? injunction granted. And there was even a date set for inter-party hearing. Before that date that was set for inter-party hearing came, to the shock of everybody, an injunction has been vacated by another ex-party application. You understand? And the reasons granted were a bit, uh, you know, challenging. Maybe what should have happened at that particular point, because there was an, a date set for inter-party hearing, maybe it was to abridge the time and say, okay, instead of waiting for that particular date, I'll bring it closer, can the two parties come and be heard? If there were comparing reasons for which the other party said, can you move quickly? That didn't happen. You believe there's but a, there's of course, a we underhand. can discuss further because mm -hmm. it's a matter that's still in court. Another matter that has to do with Mausamba, which was before Judge Katenekwa, you know, came up and Judge Katenekwa at some point because we went to the church society seeking to understand how the Red Society, which also has the duty to make sure that uh, the constitutions of political parties that are deposited, they adhere to at least the minimum, uh, to the minimum uh, standard that you can talk about. With the Patriotic Front, how do you even have the Red Society change office bearers? It was going to be shocking for that to happen. When we went to make an application, uh, or request that uh, we are given the records. For the first time in the history of this country, the social society was actually dragging their feet to grant us or to give us information, even after paying the statutory fees that are the requirement for you to get that information. I personally went to Jack Mimba as Minister of Home Affairs to challenge him how come this is happening because we got information that there's interference with the social society. Later on, went to Akafumba, who was not in office. Later on, went to another permanent secretary, who was trying to, you know, he was tongue twisted trying to explain himself. Then we discovered he was actually the one assigned to try and prevail over the resource society to have, uh, you know, office bearers changed. We challenged him. We wrote letters. They never responded to that. When I went to sit with him, he was even now exposing the fact that they were even afraid of the fact that the, the former president has announced that he's coming back. So he's saying, how did the former president come back here to resign? He said, it's not within your purview to start discussing internal issues of patriotic France. Let's, let's speak our first caller from Undola. Thank you so much for joining the conversation. Go ahead with your contribution tonight. Good evening. Good evening to you, Mr. Wallace. Good evening from Mbeke Township here in Dola. I have a question to Mr. Rafael Nagachinda. Mr. Nagachinda, why is it that your political life is always associated with the confusion? When you were in MMD, you actually sponsored this problem. We had two camps. 
one for never Sumba, the other one for Felix Mtati. You and Felix Mtati, while you were in MMD, you started working with the Patriotic Front. You were given position in the Patriotic Front. Right? The party lost the power. Again, we've got two camps, one for Edgar Lungu, the other one for Mayo Samba. Right? Prior to that, the PF had two conventions before when Sata died. Mayo Samba had one, the other one was for Edgar Lungu. The Edgar Lungu camp went to court and they were given, they were actually recognized. This time, this time, Mayo Sampa had his own confusion and he has gone to court and he has been recognized. And you are saying he has been sponsored. What proof do you have that Mayo Sampa has been sponsored by the UTAD? Thank you. Sir, Ola Sineji, thank you so much for calling us from Ndola. Would you like to respond to that question? Yes, uh, first of all, he's, uh, he has asked a very personal question. I don't know how, how I, I should answer him. First of all, uh, I was, let me talk about Patrick Front first. I was not in PF at the time that we were, there was a conference in, in 2014, or conferences in 2014. But I've come to line that basically there was only one conference uh, to which, you know, delegates and everybody had been selected and they convened. But I think there was an attempt by the acting president at the time, uh, Guy Scott, to have a candidate sponsored, in this case, Mao Samba. Uh, but I think the, the view and position of the membership across the country expressed the delegates at the, that conference, conference had already you know, made up their mind that their leader and candidate would be President Edgar Chagarongo, and they proceeded. The machination and attempts to try and sabotage that is a subject for another day. Uh, and uh, that's how President uh, Lunga emerged. The issue of uh, uh, MMD, I want to challenge you and challenge the media in the Republic of Zambia uh, to call for a meeting because I think there is a distorted narrative that has been advanced for those who want to use that particular narrative for personal survival. The issue around 2014-2015, uh, 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 MMD situation, was that after the loss in 2011, uh, there was a conference at, or convention that was held that elected Dr. Nevers as president. Uh, and uh, when there was an eminent uh, presidential by-election that was to take place in 2014 or 2015, in this case, there was a discussion around who would be the best flag bearer, you know, for MMD, you know, to front for them to be guaranteed victory. And the discussions was around the incumbent at the time, Neva Smumba, the former president, and other uh, you know, options. And the only unfortunate part is that the incumbent at the time, Nevers was not favored in terms of the membership of MMD or in the general public. I think the general public seemed to have been comparing and contrasting the performance of Mr. Sata at the time as well as Rupia Banda. Mm. And Rupia Banda seemed to have been, you know, you know, favored. It created a situation which some of us at the time we were advancing that the incumbent president, Neva Sumumba, and the former president and other stakeholders needed to sit down and look at what would be the best decision the party would make in the interest of the nation as well as the party. But as it were, personal ego, personal interest and so on, you know, you know, overcame or prevailed over individuals more than the interest of the organization mm -hmm. and the party. It's a, a very loaded discussion, yeah. which I think mm. I would challenge the media. I think for us to state and put the records clear, we need, because what I've seen is that everybody is misled uh, when it comes to history around UNIP, around MMD, by narratives created by individuals. We have people like Muhammi Lungo, who we can benefit from because he was involved directly in the transitions in UNIP. 
but also eventually found himself directly involved in the transitions of MMD. Mm -hmm. And I was personally involved directly in the transitions within MMD from the time of Dr. Nevers by being elected president 2014 and even the events that followed after. The only f challenge I have in this country is that is generally maybe other people were cowards because I don't f see how uh, today, like the caller is trying to suggest, Honorable Mutati, who is part of the UPND government today, would sit and the UPND, the president and officials of UPND would be advancing an erroneous uh, narrative to suggest that you're sponsored by Patriotic Front and be seated in cabinet and keeping quiet. Mutati was president of MMD after the 2016 you know, convention. He should be able to answer what transpired. Mm. Mutoro Piri, who is agricultural minister, was vice president to Mutati. And the vi other vice president was Ani Mushachu you know, Chungo. This should be able to you know, set the record straight and actually explain where was uh, that convention sponsored by PF or not. Let us come back to the PF issues. Now, when mm. we come to PF issues, mm. and, 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 clearly... Yeah, and, and clearly I want to ask a, a very direct question yeah, to you. Uh, before, you yeah. we, before you get there, with Mao Samba, the president has, you know, admitted and exposed himself several times. The so-called retreat that converted into so-called conference of less than 200 people, when the conference of, you know, PF uh, requires that not less than 6,000 people, because when you look at the provision of a constitution, it provides that uh, at least a minimum of 600 delegates should come from all the provinces. 600 by 10 is what? 6,000. Then you have to talk about uh, central committee members. You have to talk about uh, members of parliament. You have to talk about uh, councillors. You have to talk about uh, you know, council chairpersons. They are all captured there as delegates. So it's more than 6,000. Where you are seated there, in that small hall uh, that is said to be a conference by Mosam, where even 300 or 250 you know, people gathered there, the answer is no. So just on that aspect itself, nobody who is sensible and normal in this country can even call that as a conference. Yes, we have to advance no. those, you know, those... Those, uh, the, no, those, 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 those are matters, things, obviously. The yeah. But let's pick our second caller, Matthew Strongo from Kawe. Mm. Matthew Strongo. Hello? Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us. Go ahead with your contribution. Yes, good evening, Ivana Kachinda. Good evening, good evening. Yeah, Matthew Strongo calling from Kawe. You are on point, Ivana Kachinda, because this government, the new Donny government, they promise us a lot. Nothing is being done. Who of law is not working. Even the freedom of expression is not working. Even those rangos, which they, it is in the PF, they are saying we have got two, two, two parties. No, we have got only, only, only one camp led by a former president. That Mao Sanpa was just elected from the junkies on October 24. It's not the original PF who elected the Mao Zedong. That those were elected by the junkies. So we don't know Sampa because Sampa was expelled and he was defended in the parliament by our Madam Nelly Muti. He was totally expelled from the party. So the, the president, when when he had a press conference. He, he was being asked by journalist Chilala, and he refused that, you know, I've got no hands in, in PF. But the question I can ask, he was at airport in Kasama. He refused when Chilala asked him, but in Kasama airport, he, he recognized the leader of opposition, Robert Chavinga. The, the question is simple, who is he? Who is using Imingala to for PF? He refused so much, the Wenichilala. 
Mm. Ask him those questions about Mauro Sampa. Thank you so much, Wachongo. Uh, Wachongo, speaking the same language as you, Honorable Nakachin, they say that there's only one patriotic front. But I'd like to find out from you, Honorable. The Electoral Commission last month did reject nominations of your candidates in the by-election, stating that the adoption certificate need, need to be signed by the President and the Secretary General, which is yourself, technically means that the, the Electoral Commission of Zambia doesn't recognize you as SG, neither does it recognize uh, President Isio as President of the Patriotic Front. Who is SG and who is President of the PF? First of all, the mere fact that you have come to that conclusion indicts the ECZ because they have no business with the internal affairs of Patriotic Front. They have no business whatsoever because these matters are still in court. Remember that, first of all, we raised alarm when Misaka in HLM appointed Madam Mangarazanomisi as chairperson for ECZ, as a commission, you know, chairperson for the commission at ECZ, because she was, and she still is, a UPND cadre. She has never renounced that position. She's a UPND cadre who was campaigning, wearing, you know, UPND regalia in Western Province and some parts of the country. Mr. McDonald Chipenzi. And there's nothing wrong with belonging to a party. You see, there's nothing wrong to belong to a political party, but the moment you belong to a political party, you are, pro in a way, precluded or eliminated from holding certain positions because of the fear and threat that you will be tempted to advance partisan interest. ECZ is, quote-unquote, the empire when it comes to electioneering in this country. How would you have a player in the directional process be the empire also? Somebody who has clearly expressed their you know, affiliation to one of the players, then you say, no, be the empire and expect an objective position. We are not questioning the credentials of Madam you know, Mangarazaromis. She possibly is qualified. She's a renowned lawyer in this country, but she's politically affiliated and a member of UPND. My brother, you know, McDonald Chipenzi, is a UPND member, a cadre, who even attempted to stand on UPND ticket in Chirun. Of course, he attempted to try and cross himself as civil society and started that organization called Gears. We have more information now on the role Gears played than for him to be rewarded you know, uh, that position in 2020 general elections. Some of the people interact with the with the McDonald Chipenzi privately. He's even boasting that 2026, forget, we have already put a machinery in place. Forget, PF will not even be anywhere near. Do you know that as we speak today, there is an attempt to undertake the limitations and increase the number of, you know, you know, constituencies in southern, western, and northwestern provinces, and maybe one or two in other provinces just as a way of a cover-up, but all intended to make sure that the UPND have a greater, you know, number of MPs if they don't succeed to manipulate using this small sample project to manipulate the numbers in parliament and be able to change the constitution. These people are thinking beyond today to reintroduce the, a one-party state and, you know, uh, you know, even increase the tenure of office of Mr. Penda HLM. He is manipulating situations. And I'm telling you, you may not like me as an individual, but let's look at this country and when it comes and issues to do with democracy. Before you talk about personal interest, you understand? You may not like PF, but I can tell you that uh, uh, what the UPND are doing soon and very soon. UP, PF is a victim of their Mingarato. Next it will be the church. From the church to be the media. From the media to the general public. The monster we are creating in Misaka and the UPND will soon begin to eat even its own children. Even the UPND now members within the UPND, they can see that the environment within which they are operating in UPND speaks to dictatorship because their voices opinions mm. and views are not being taken care of. Soon it will extend to the Zambian people. So all we are saying is that let's stop this dictator called Mr. Kainde as quickly as possible before this, the democracy that we, 
you know, fought for and uh, uh, we'll be know, discussing how you intend to stop uh, President Taka in this time. But let's take our last set of commercials on our back. We do the last bit of the show as we also pick one or two calls that are coming from you across the country. As we conclude uh, the program tonight, uh, I will not allow you to go, you know, Honorable Rafael Nagachinda, before you can, uh, you can give your reflection on the last press briefing that the President had. Uh, well, he disclosed that the year 2024, you know, is dedicated to economic growth and expansion. Uh, also, he said that 2023 was spent on debt restructuring and opening up the rigidities that existed in the mining sector. Where do you think, really, uh, this government is either getting it right or wrong? when it comes to economic management of this country? For a president to spend four hours trying to explain himself and justify what he has done in the last two years and also the last one year, four hours means that he did nothing. At least according to Professor Mumba, he says if a person has to spend an hour trying to explain what they did, and what they have been able to achieve, it means that they've done nothing. Debt restructuring. Civil servants and everybody else were mobilized and bust to the airport to go and celebrate something that was not concrete. Later on, we raised issues, remember, we were discussing with you, and I think uh, Mr. Costa was here about the fact that this is just a facade to try and do it. The Zaman people. What did we happen? What what followed? IMF, you know, basically disowning the so-called the success of debt restructuring. The president was boasting about his meeting with Macron and so on and so forth. It means nothing. There is nothing that will come from there. The global economy in the West are preoccupied with uh, Ukraine, Russia. I know conflict, and we also now have a new one, the Israel, you know, Palestine, you know, challenge in Gaza. Um, what we needed and what we expected UPN to focus on, which was basically the direction we're taking us, but what we found is that after putting up infrastructure, uh, the infrastructure we put in in all sectors was that we're moving into the direction of inter in industrializing value addition and be able to be productive as a country. That's the only answer mm. so for what, economy to when move When you on. say that nothing is going to come out of the IMF deal, what do you, what do you really mean? There's because nothing. There, uh, you, 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 you can't have a minister, a minister, a minister. percent of our creditors have agreed you know, to, to, to what we're bringing on the table. Well, I'm talking to you, this is the 1st of uh, January of 2024. Mr. Kainde HLM will change his story in the next three months. He'll be just trying himself again. To have him a president, even when it comes to the mining sector, a president telling a minister, save for the fact these are just deals that like on the street, as a way to demonstrate that the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing, the president says, ah, oh, minister, you are here. Uh, you're supposed to sign that deal. Uh, I think you leave, go and uh, make sure that that deal is signed before this press conference ends. Uh, I want a note that you have signed the deal. What does it say to you as a taxpayer? Is that due diligence? First of all, the minister is not the one who prepares these uh, you know, agreements. It's a technical class with the other technical class from the private sector, particularly the company interested to invest. You see, and then further on, you expect that the, the Attorney General's office will be able to scrutinize those agreements. When there is a presidential decree to, decree to that effect, it means that all these processes are sabotaged because the president has even capped. I want before I finish talking, you bring the agreements signed. So Kabul say we just sympathize with him. At that particular point, he's just a zombie getting documents to have them signed. Whether they are scrutinized or not, is immaterial because he has he's watching um, uh, television to see whether his boss is still talking because he needs to deliver a note that we have signed before he finishes to speak. That's reckless. But it's also a, big, a sign of a bigger problem. 
that these ministers and these technocrats are not given the latitude to express themselves and run as professionals. They are being micro micromanaged by the president. Look at the KCM saga. Mopan and KCM are, are, are back, you know, they have been given back life. You, you don't, the PF is not excited about this. Which life are you talking about? Let's accept that we have a president who is a dealer and a liar. If we don't accept the reality we are faced with, we are going to always create a mountain of hope and end up completely disappointed. Ms. Akainde's promises and political, you know, political and economic strategies are falling on their, you know, flat on their belly. They will not be able to deliver any dividends. Zambians must begin to prepare themselves for a meaningful change from these incompetent and naive politicians who thought that politics and governing a country can be undertaken the same way they were doing in the boardrooms in managing their private you know, uh, businesses, whose source are basically taking advantage of a privatization process. These are not original business people who started from where you can trust that they started from here. Mm. These are people who took uh, advantage of the process. Mm. As we conclude, how does the future of the Patriotic Front look like? Very bright. Very bright. We are glad that Ms. Aka and the HLM in his naivety undertook this project you know, of these two years of mouse and so on. Because the Zambian people are not stupid. They can see and tell that this is sponsored by him. He may try and reject and so on. And I even see it and laugh. So this man thinks the Zambian people are stupid, eh? That something that the Zambian people know is originating from him, and he thinks he can convince them by saying, Nimlandane, what am I, you know, why do you want to accuse me? You are diso dis basically disregarding the rule of law in Kabushi, in Kwacha, mm. and I say, Nimlandane. I'm, not, I'm innocent, and you think people know, I mean, don't know? You come and say, I'm not involved in Mao Sampa. Mao Sampa up to today is being protected by the police at home as he moves. Same applies to these con men like Robert Chavinga. Who doesn't know Robert Chavinga? You know, in his private and public life. Is he is, is, is a member of parliament? Is he a PF member of parliament? Of course. I mean, uh, as it were, politics sometimes produces all kinds of things. You understand? And the authorities at that particular time maybe didn't know what I know. And today is a so called member of parliament. And you are even saying leader of opposition. And the president goes like the caller was saying in Kasama says, don't be afraid, just continue. Then he goes on a personal thing to refuse that he's not interested in the affairs of patriotic front. Who is he fooling? I want to tell Mr. Kain de Shema, Wadana, there is only one thing. A G project in Yumabuza Mount Sampa. That I'm going to or stop it. I can tell you it will only work towards the campaigning you and finish you politically. For us, we're sitting pretty because the Zambian people can see and he is totally exposed on this one and many other fronts. The people who have given him a script in his quest to destroy Patoto Front have given him a wrong script and he's working against him. His obsession over you know, President Edgar Chagarungu, this idea of wanting to frame President Edgar Chagarungu, wanting to go and plant in you know, either arms and wanting to go and uh, search his home, suggesting that uh, they are seditious it... materials and all that. You're just making that gentleman popular. This plan to say, let's arrest him, you're just making him popular. And this country is edgy, is um, at a verge of eruption in terms of, you know, uh, 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 protesting against the economic situation. Those who are in the intelligence and those who are in the security wings prevail on this president that his appetite to use everything and do everything from a political mm -hmm. point of view will only run this country into chaos. We are restraining our members over Mao Sampa. 
I can going tell on. you that if it wasn't for the mm. responsibility and the uh, mm. uh, uh, restraint that President Lungu and all of us are exerting on our members and sympathizers of Patriotic Front, Mao Sampa's life is, is, is at, at risk. We'll Just like now. all those who are involved. We have to go now. But we're saying, thank you so much for joining let's us tonight. Let's not go that way and preserve the peace of this country. Thank, thank you, so much you for joining us tonight. This is DJ Mutati exclusive. All right, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.